Will Mr. Murphy be attending? He said he was coming, but. Okay. Well, I can hang out and see okay. if he makes it. Just oh, stand right here. Oh, okay. I, Roger Bauer. I, Roger Bauer. Hereby accept the honor. Hereby accept the honor. Of serving as a member. Of serving as a member. Of the Code Enforcement Board. Of the Code Enforcement Board. Of the City of Alpharetta, Georgia. Of the City of Alpharetta, Georgia. And in so doing. And in so doing. I do solemnly swear or affirm. I do solemnly swear or affirm. That I shall faithfully perform. That I shall faithfully perform. The duties of board member. The duties of board member. That I will regularly attend meetings. That I will regularly attend meetings. And uphold the ideals of community and service. And uphold the ideals of community and service. That I will act and conduct business. That I will act and conduct business. In accordance with. In accordance with. The city's code of ethics and conduct. The city's code of ethics and conduct. And that I shall support. And that I shall support. The charter and laws of the city of Alpharetta. The Charter and Laws of the City of Alpharetta. The Constitution and Laws of the State of Georgia. The Constitution and Laws of the State of Georgia. And the Constitution and Laws of the United States of America. And the Constitution and Laws of the United States of America. So sworn this 24th day of February 2022. If you could please sign for me here. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Mr. Murphy? Welcome. If you kind of follow along, that's Mr. Bowers. And okay. I'm just going to read it off. And if you please just raise your right hand and repeat after me. Yes. I, Leander Murphy. I, Leander Murphy. Hereby accept the honor. Hereby accept the honor. Of serving as a member of the, serving as a member. As serving as a member. Of the Code Enforcement Board of the City of Alpharetta, Georgia. As a member of the Code Enforcement Board of the City of Alpharetta, Georgia. And in so doing. And in so doing. I do solemnly swear or affirm. I do solemnly swear or affirm. That I shall faithfully perform the duties. That I should faithfully perform the duties board member a board member that I will act that I will regularly attend meetings that I will regularly act and regularly attend meetings and uphold the ideals of community and service and uphold the ideals of community and service that I will act and conduct business <clears throat> that I will act and conduct business in accordance with the city's code of ethics and conduct in this in, in accordance with the city's code of ethics and conduct and that I shall support and that, that I shall support Charter and Laws of the City of Alpharetta. The Charter and Laws of the City of Alpharetta. The Constitution and Laws of the State of Georgia. The Constitution and Laws of the State of Georgia. And the Constitution and Laws of the United States of America. And the Constitution and Laws of the United States of America. So sworn this 24th day of February 2022. So sworn this 24th day of February 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please sign right here for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.
some sound on here. Is that me or is that? Okay. It's too noisy. It is. You good? Welcome to the February 24th meeting of the City of Alpharetta's Code Enforcement Board. My name is Fred Smith and I'm chairman of the board and now call this meeting to order. Please let the record show that the following members of the board are present. Um, Mr. Bauer, Mr. Freeman, Ms. McDonald, and Mr. Murphy. The board operates under the authority granted by the state of Georgia under Title 36, Chapter 74 of the Code of Georgia and through the City of Alpharetta's Code Enforcement Ordinance. Let the record show that a certified copy of the codes and ordinances of the City of Alpharetta are part of the proceedings today. Having called the meeting to order and completed the roll call, we're now ready to approve the meetings of our la minutes of our last meeting. Uh, and uh, hopefully everybody's had a chance to look at those minutes and I will need a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve uh, the minutes of the February 27, 2020. Yes. We have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second it. We got a second, is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. I'll need to abstain. I wasn't. Okay. All opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you very much. The purpose of the Code Enforcement Board of the City of Alpharetta is to judicially consider the evidence presented by both the city and the respondents in the cases that come before our board. The Code Enforcement Board does not enact the laws of the city, but rather determines that the laws have been applied fairly and imposed properly in the matters before us. If this board finds that the ordinances in the city and the codes of the city of Alpharetta have been applied properly in the cases, the board may also then impose deadlines for respondents compliance and can institute penalties for non-compliance. The city will present its case first. After the city presents its evidence and testimony, the board may then follow with questions for the city. Then the respondents will present their side of the case and the board may also question the respondents. Upon the completion of the board's questioning, the board will then consider evidence and will present a finding of fact. If we find the respondent guilty, the board may then choose to issue orders requiring the respondent's compliance and impose appropriate penalties in the event of non-compliance. I caution the respondents to make good use of the time that they have at the podium. Once the board begins deliberation, there can be no more presentation of evidence. I ask that everyone remember two things. The first one is, when addressing the board, please speak at the podium and speak direct, directly into the microphone. And secondly, I ask that you address all of your comments to me. I ask that you address all your comments to me. I told you to trust. To me, the chairman, I'll route them and handle them in the appropriate manner. These proceedings are part of public record, and if you are going to make testimony before this board, you will need to come forward and be sworn. And I'll ask the city attorney to swear those individuals in now. So please come forward. Yes, 
testimony you were about to give is for sure the whole truth and nothing but the truth? It is. Okay. Do you uh, swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Thank you. Okay, our case today is uh, CE210532 and CE210532, it's, it's repeated on here, uh, and Officer Smith has this case. Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the board. The case I'm bringing before you today is located at 200 Summerfield Drive. Um, do you mind if I sit here at the chair so I can display things? Okay. Just so you're all aware, we are having some significant technical issues. If you've been watching any of the council meetings or anything lately, the city halls is having some, some real technical difficulties in the room here. We're working on them, um, looking at a wholesale system, hopefully next month, um, but parts are a, a problem right now. So um, you'll just have to bear with us a little bit. All right, so the property is Summerfield Drive. Um, as you can see on the map, it's located off of Haynes Bridge, um, Haynes Bridge Road. Uh, you turn into, uh, I believe, Black Watch Lane. Um, and it's located right off of there. The uh, code violation on the property is uh, RV stored in an area visible from the street, which is a violation of our Unified Development Code, uh, Section 2.5.4B. If you can see that on the screen, it's uh, one business vehicle not prohibited by the provisions of this ordinance from parking within a residential, residential district and one or more recreational vehicles or boats or boat trailers may be parked or stored in an area not visible from the street. And um, <clears throat> the code enforcement received a um, phone call or a, a voicemail uh, regarding the neighborhood in question um, about several complaints and RVs was one of them. Um, and that was on September 15th, uh, 2021. And um, so code enforcement investigated and found that uh, there was an RV stored in the area visible from the street. Um, and when code enforcement stopped by, um, the property owner indicated that they had previously been granted permission to keep the RV in an area visible from the street by a um, former code enforcement, code enforcement officer. Um, and at that time I said that I would go back, speak with my manager about the, the issue. Um, and it was still determined that it was a uh, code violation. Um, and so we moved forward uh, with that notice on um, so we, so a, a verbal notice was given to the property owner. Um, hold on, sorry. So she was given a week to, con she actually contacted uh, 
my manager um, regarding the issue, and she was given a week to do that. Um, she did so. Um, there were uh, several options um, given, such as finding an area not visible from the street on the property, um, bushes or some sort of vegetation um, was an option to, to shield the RV um, from the street. Um, <clears throat> and on uh, September 27th, um, code enforcement uh, reinspected the property. Um, she, says, she stated that she was uh, still working on a solution. Um, and so code enforcement directed the property owner to, to uh, provide an update um, on a solution no later than October 4th. On October 11th, the property remained out of compliance. Um, a notice of violation was issued to the property owner. Seven days were allowed to provide a plan to, for compliance to code enforcement. Once the plan was provided, then 30 days uh, were provided to have the plan implemented uh, and brought into compliance. Um, if no plan was provided, there, was, there would have been, within the seven days, a summons would have been issued. Um, a plan was provided um, on, and that was for the uh, trees. On December 3rd, uh, code enforcement inspected the property for compliance. A cover was put over the RV, um, as well as a few artificial trees, and lattice was placed um, in front to try and cover, to try and uh, make the RV not visible from the street. Uh, code enforcement was still able to see the RV from the street uh, from several different angles. On December 3rd, a summons was issued to the uh, property owner um, Heather, Mora and Ad, uh, Heather M. Mora and Adam Christopher Jordan. Uh, that's what's on our tax records. Um, and the date provided for the code, code enforcement board hearing was originally the 27th, but was pushed back to today. Um, I'll show you some photos. So actually, um, the dates in our system show the, the following day. So I was wrong in that. It was actually the 14th of September um, that code enforcement uh, observed the RV. So as you can see, um, that's the RV right there. Not to need a more close-up picture, but that's, that's a picture right there of it. And would you like to see photos in the meantime, or do you just want to see the December 23rd, or December 3rd photo? Yes. Okay. 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 Well, I'll just, there's a picture on, from the 3rd. Um, a cover was placed on it and the trees, artificial trees and lattice placed in front of it as well. And here's another photo. And i um, happy to answer any questions that the board may have. What? You mentioned that they said that they had gotten some kind of approval. Did you did you find anything anywhere that anybody had said that that was okay for them to have that vehicle there? So there was never any um, variance granted by the city. Because um, it would be a variance. It'd have to be a variance. It couldn't be on the word of anybody else. Um, th what the what the homeowner stated was that uh, former. Uh, code enforcement officers, uh, Officer Bafti and Officer Webb, um, had talked to them and stated that uh, as it as it was with the cover on it, that it would have been compliant. Um, we had a uh, after speaking um, with them, that there was a, a different message presented um, that the, the they were never granted 
uh, permission to, for just the cover to be on it and it be in compliance. Would the backyard lend itself for the RV being placed back there? Would that be in violation of any other city ordinance? If it's not visible from the street, no. Um, but I don't know that there is, it doesn't seem like that moving it to the backyard was an option. I believe there's a pool in the rear yard. Okay. okay. Um, okay. But uh, as far as that goes, um, if they were, yes. When were they first cited about this issue? I mean, the timeline again? As far as me, yeah, it was September. Like the third week or something of September. Okay. You're looking for that, Bill. I'll put a picture up here okay. for the board to okay. see. This this is an aerial of the structure. Be right here. Okay. It was uh, September uh, 13th. Any further questions for Officer Smith? Yes, I guess the, the other okay. question is, you, you had mentioned that um, artificial trees were placed in front of the, in front of the, the RV. So my, my question is, was it that there was an insufficient amount of trees placed so that that RV is not visible? But Correct. If there were. So the, the, the message, message was relayed to, uh, they could use trees, artificial or live, there, there wasn't a, uh, specification on our artificial alive uh, but the message was relayed that the RV could not be visible from the street um, at any point any other questions okay thank you officer Smith uh, let's see miss Moore and mr. Jordan Thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having us. How's everybody doing today? Good. Well, let my wife talk. She's been <laughs> handling this more than I have since I've traveled for work. And the microphone should be right there. Okay, so um, I'm Heather Jordan. This is my husband, Adam. I think you already introduced yourself. <laughs> Sorry, we haven't had to deal with this before. Um, so just to give you a bit more information on where we're at with things is that um, originally we had um, Officer Jennifer Bepti actually came out September 17th, 2018. And at that time she said uh, she'd been driving around and saw the camper that we had and said that, um, you know, it was visible from the street. So she was great. My husband actually talked to her the following day and told her, you know, what are our options? She said, well, you can put up a fence. You can, I think that's all she had suggested at the time was a fence. So we thought, okay, well, you know, the camper's maybe about nine, 10 feet tall. So if we can only put up a six foot fence, that, you know, wouldn't really make sense. But at the time we did look into it. Um, and we also said, what are other options? And um, we we're looking at camper covers. And so we had a camper cover and um, talked to her on the phone and said, you know, look, you know, and I said, I wanna make sure before I get a camper cover, this is something that would be acceptable for code enforcement before I go and spend a few hundred dollars on a, camp, a nice camper cover. Um, mind you, it's a, you can kind of see it's a 24 foot, um, like I said, it's probably about like nine, 10 feet tall. Um, it's not like a big fifth wheel or you know anything like that. So in any case, she said yes, as long as there's not, um, she said as long as the camper stays, you know, the cover stays on the camper, you're good, no issues. So she actually came by, um, I don't know, it was like a week or two after we got it because it took a few weeks for it to come in. We put it on the camper. She said it was perfect, no issues, no problems. That was it. So I do want to note that uh, when she first arrived, a warning was given. So I right. saw the warning on the door. That's why I called to figure out a solution. Um, no further citation or warning was given after we purchased a cover and used a cover. To and she did, she did come back and look at it and said that it was totally fine, it was perfect. So then we had a visit from Officer Webb nine months later on um, July 24th 
2019. And he came out and he said he just, uh, that was like his territory now, he was driving around, didn't he get, you know, he didn't get a call or anything and saw the camper and said that we weren't in compliance. And I said, you know, repeated the story to him and he said, you know, okay, let me go back and talk to her. Uh, he came back the next day and I spoke with him and he said, I'm so sorry that I bothered you with this. I talked to her and she said that, you know, she had given you permission to do this. And she, he said specifically, because I wrote it down in my phone because I thought, okay, this is a second visit, you know. So I, he said, you have a variance from the city of any, oh, if anybody, um, he goes, if anybody comes out, says anything to you in the future, you tell them you have a variance and they can either talk to myself or Officer Betty and we'll take care of it. We're so sorry. I mean, he apologized up and down. And just to note on that instance, no warning was issued. It was just verbal and no following citation occurred after that. Okay. So then um, the rest of it's pretty much true. So now we're talking more than two years later. Um, Officer Smith came out and tried to explain the same thing to him. Now, the third officer I'm dealing with. And um, he, yes, when he came out, the camper cover was off. and Because um, we had been using it, especially during the time of COVID. Right. We were camping a lot just to get out. So. Um, then, of course, I got hit with COVID. So you're going to see there's a bit from the time that the violation was, um, I got hit with COVID really bad and was down for about a good two and a half months. So... Actually, I think the day before he came out, I was at the cardiologist. So I was dealing with that. I was <laughs> so upset trying to figure out why am I hearing different things. We were told we had a variance. I, truly, I didn't even know what the word meant until Officer Webb said that we had a variance. So um, we did put up. So I did look into, you know, trying to figure out with my frustration, I did look into trees, but it doesn't make sense to put up, you know, Leland, huge Leland cypresses that you can't keep, you know, they said, well, why don't you put it on wheels and wheel it in and out? I'm thinking, how am I going to move Leland cypresses that gets, you know, super tall? So we looked into that, several hundreds of dollars, putting in a fence, we had talked about that option. Well, again, that doesn't make sense because when we had said that we were going to potentially try to put a fence in, we were told that, well, you're going to be in violation because you can't have more than a six foot fence. So um, I did put up the artificial trees because I felt that there was no way I was going to be able again to have, you know, live trees put up. But the fact is that it's, you know, we were told, well, you know, why don't you just put it around the back of your house? Well, one, we have a swimming pool and we, you know, have three dogs and need a fence. And um, it, but more than that, I just feel like, you know, this is something that we were told this. We've, you know, complied with you guys. And never had, never been in court, never had any issues, been living in Alpharetta 20 years, and, you know, would have kind of, you know, had more um, communication, a few different issues came up. So um, with, you know, my daughter going to medical leave from college and COVID and stuff like that. So or this would have been dealt with, you know, quicker. Um, but, you know, that, I guess that's just kind of where we're at with things. So, and then when I actually had requested the information, um, you know, because I, Officer Smith had come back and did say that there was no records that Officer, you know, Babti or Officer Webb had put anything in your system saying that we had these conversations and that Officer Babti had actually come back out and seen the cover and said, yes, we're good. And Officer Webb had, you know, Webb, Webb, I'm sorry, Weber, Webb, Webb, Webb sorry. Um, you know, had, had come out also and apologized up and down. I'm like, why is this stuff not noted in the system that I had these conversations, you know, with these officers? So I feel like we're just kind of being, you know, having our fingers pointed at us saying you're in the wrong, but I feel like we've done everything that we were asked to do and, and tried to be in compliance. And now it's put up a fence, you know, go put your camper someplace else and spend more money doing that. We wouldn't have bought a, a camper cover, we wouldn't have, you know, done the things that we did if we were going to have to spend money later to go make up for something that we were told that was apparently incorrect. So we're, we're kind of looking for a little leniency here to see if we can try to try to make things right. Well, it's unfortunate that it you is. got that you got all the mixed signals about being in compliance and not being in compliance. And if you look at that, we had that up there that was highlighted about what the violation is. Mm -hmm. If you look down further below there, 
that's not highlighted. It says the only way you can get into variance is go to the community or what is the director of community development. Mm -hmm. That's the only person that can give you a variance. Yeah. None these officers can't give you a variance. I, it, it wasn't even that they could give me a variance. Is that and again, I'm just the, a citizen. But, and, there was and the no reason way. you're hear, reason you're hearing from everybody again is because it isn't in compliance, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's that's the sad part about this is that you have going going through this process thinking that you were but you, and that's the reason and if we stop right here and you go out that door somebody's going to be coming back again saying you're not in compliance and i've got to give you credit for your creativity uh, I, I, I saw the i saw everything that you've done to well you know we, we, to, look, we don't we, we we love our neighborhood right want to be Part. We, look, we know why the rule exists. Nobody right. wants Cousin Eddie's RV in right. the driveway, right? But we just don't feel like that's our case, right? right. I mean, I have a, our driveway is long, 127 right. feet. It's all the way in the back with the cover on it. Um, you know, most of the time it looks like this. This is still on. Uh, you got to turn it upside yeah, the other way. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, you know, I, I see what you're saying. So, you know, so from, I mean. From actual street view. Yeah. I mean, I've, you know, gone over to Lowe's and I'm like, this is what I need, I need to cover this. And he's like, what am I looking at? You know? Um, yeah, we just want to find a solution that makes everybody right. happy. So. Well, there's, I can tell you, I know of two instances in my neighborhood that have gone through this and they had bigger vehicles than you did. And they had to uh, make some other kind of arrangement at their house to make sure that it could not be seen from the street. And they, and it, it was an effort, but both of those people said, okay, uh, this is what we've got to do. One pulled it around behind another one found another place to park it and uh, that's that's the unfortunate part of this mm -hmm. is that you have spent some money on it and uh, but it's it still isn't in compliance okay. does anybody have any questions in Everything was verbal. There's nothing in writing, no emails, no, hey, this is my understanding, docu documenting it. That's well, I mean, I have, I mean, I have here as far as the first notice that was given. Was here. That was on, you know, uh, September 17th of 2018. And again, if a notice was given and we didn't follow up with some kind of compliance, we would have issued, we would have been here a lot sooner. Uh, right. So, you know, so we did work with her try to come up with a solution in her eyes buying a cover and I have the date we purchased the cover here we Just yeah we purchased the cover November 17 here um to, to make that situation feasible to her unfortunately it wasn't we were given correct, correct information so we, you know. and then the you know when we had asked well let's you know you know, I had asked to see, We'd asked see, to the, see record. the records, the stuff that was put in writing, and unfortunately, just those instances weren't dictated very well. You have here um, 1010, you know, through working out the process of trying to come up with a solution with her, the first. Uh, That's the only note you guys that, have. Um, I was trying to figure out maybe building a fence. But, right. You know, and, and that was the solution that kept being offered to us build a fence. The problem is, if I would have went through that, I would have been in code violation of building a fence taller than six feet. It's going to take eight feet to cover it. So I would have been in more, situ more wrongdoing than I am now. Right. So just a lot of mixed messages and a lot of mixed signals, unfortunately. Does anybody have any questions? What is the, uh, what has the, uh, I have a question. I guess I could ask you or Officer Smith. Um, what has the city offered when people have to build a fence high enough to obscure a vehicle? Or, or uh, so, so the the fence in the Unified Development Code, there's a, a six foot height limit for residential districts. Uh, it can be exceeded if uh, keeping the, the straight line from a slope up to nine feet. Um, but I don't know in this case that anything beyond six feet would be um, permitted um, per the code. So as far as building a, a fence um, higher than that, it wouldn't be 
Okay. Know. Okay. I think. I think if, if the fence were the given solution that was was desired, I think what we probably would have done would have waived fees for a public hearing and sent it to city council to make sure that they were okay with that as a solution. I think that's what would have been the, the way to go with that. I know in that neighborhood, we have worked in my 18 years here, we've worked with several vehicles out there um, that have had to have some unique things. We've got a couple boats that are parked behind houses. Uh, we had an RV right basically across the street from you guys that that um, spent a lot of money doing um, exactly what what the sort of attempt was with the with the trees and and did a, a really good screen and then would roll them out of the way on their concrete pad when they take it out. Um, so we've we have tried to work with people and come up with some unique ones. Um, it's just the fact that. This one was a little bit different when we got complaints. If the officer is just viewing it where, yes, it is a code violation, you know, we're not getting a complaint out of the neighborhood, you know, we can work a lot longer on that. Um, but with a with the actual complaint, we had to, you know, shorten the timelines up a little bit. I will say, though, the timelines are fairly long. I mean, we started in September. Right. Pictures were in in December, so um, you know, I think we did what we could in trying to help them out. You did mention. I'm sorry, am I allowed Go ahead. to address you? you? You said that there was complaints or one. Complaint? Yeah, it started as a complaint. One complaint. about the neighborhood. It wasn't just yes. yours, but about yeah. several RVs in the neighborhood and other. A lot things. of different. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of complaints. The original neighbors. Yeah. We did. We did. We had. He had said a complaint, so I just wanted, I was going to say because we've never had an issue, you know, with any of our neighbors, so I was just, but it sounds like it was one of the original owners, you know, it sounded like they wanted to take a drive around <laughs> with you guys to go check out everything she didn't like in the neighborhood. Well, so. I think there was multiple addresses, so I would say that <laughs> yeah. probably, that'd probably be correct is what yeah. happened there, but, uh, you know. I know that you guys had to address it, I, you know, I get it, but I just... It seems like a lot of effort on everybody's part for us to be here, for you guys to have to hear this, all because we were given the wrong information. And I feel like, you know, if we're being told, well, you guys can put up a fence, but we'd still be in violation if we put up a six foot fence with the 10 foot camper. So I, mean, I guess I would ask now that we're hearing what you just said, is a fence a viable option? Can we go that route and try to see if that's a solution? I mean, I don't know that that's a viable option, but if that's an option that you would want to pursue, yeah. then we'll have to see what this board finds mm -hmm. and see if there's time to pursue a different thing. And then what we would ask is, you know, um, I would need to talk to my director, but we'll, we'll see if that's a, a viable option. Yeah. You know, um, there are some things that, that city council can't hear as variances. And so I'm not an expert on their that side of the code so we'll but if that's your solution that comes out of this whole thing and you guys want to pursue that then you'll work with me and we'll we'll talk I to the right folks and see I think if we can that we're kind of at that point because i feel like again we were told we can do this no 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 you know yes you're good and but then it's like no you were told the wrong thing and then yes you're good but you know so i feel like i'm afraid to spend any more money on anything you know right. So I don't want to be, well, you know, I don't want to put up a fence <laughs> and then do. somebody else say, well, something's changed. Nope, that's, you got to put a taller fence. You got to, fence isn't good enough. So, you know, I. Yeah, but if a fence was an option, I would much rather have a nice designed fence than artificial trees around my house. So if that's something we can discuss as an option and investigate. I'm what What is the process on that to the, uh, and how long do you would you think some does that go through the uh, uh, community development? Does that go through them to get the variant? They're gonna they're gonna start with me. Um, I would ask that the board, if if it's your uh, purview, I would ask that you give us um, today's the twenty fourth, so about. 100 days okay 
um, 90 days of that um, being what we would need probably for a public hearing. And so, uh, or maybe you could tie something to uh, all public hearings to get on the calendar are filed. The deadline is to file the first working day of a month. Okay. So maybe you could tie that to a March 1st, you know, to file by March 1st, if, you know, to move forward. Some options for you guys. But I think we would need 100 days minimum probably to work it out. We may get it worked before that as far as an approval, but then I think if an approval were gained, then I think um, I think we would probably ask city council for their date of uh, Here, compliance. Okay. So okay. I think if, I, to me, if you're gonna move that way, then I think, I think we go in that direction um, and just leave the, you know, leave it to city council if they go that way. If these folks meet that March 1st deadline, if they don't, then, you know, then as, as you know, you can, you can move into a penalty phase after the March 1st if, you know, if there's not something going, if that's the way you want to. Um, so I have a couple questions. Um, you mentioned about your swimming pool. So I'm assuming that the swimming pool is in such a position there was no way to push it further behind or move it in yep. such a way to get it out of the way. We yeah. have tried to come up with. Yeah. <laughs> right, would, okay, I, I see it, right, it. yeah. The issue is our backyard fence is six feet. So if I put it back there, I'd have to tuck it in a situation I wouldn't be able to. Right. Do. Yeah. And then I have another question for staff. Are there other eight or nine foot fences in the neighborhood? Has that been, or do you know off the top of your head? I don't know specifically in that neighborhood. Okay. And, and do you all have active HOA or no? Okay, so you don't have to worry about an HOA and getting their permission. Okay, that's fine. Have you, I'm sure you've done this, have you looked at places to park it until this issue could be resolved? We, we have. Um, it, you know, obviously there's a cost associated with it. Right. You know, there tends to be, if, if you're part of the camper community, it's a, it's a lot of bad things happen when you start parking your camper off-site. Just because of where you locate it, there's a rodent problem. It, right. just, it can create financial burden down the road, you know, if you store it in a place like that. That's why we chose not to do it. And, you know, but, you know, okay. I have looked into it. Okay. Just not our desirable option. Mr. Freeman. I, ju I was just going to make a general observation. I think given the way this has all evolved from the very beginning, that the idea of coming up with an alternative solution that they can create within whatever timeline that the city sets for that would be in order. So we need probably to move with some sort of a motion that says that, but understand that the plan can't just be a plan on paper. It needs to be real. Absolutely. And that, and, that, and that if you don't make those dates, of course. we would handle it very differently. Yeah, we understand that. The only question I, would, I heard a date of March 1st deadline, what, would that be a deadline of creating the fence or just putting a plan in place? No, if the, if the board so moves that direction, that March 1st deadline would be to meet with me and staff and get oh, yeah. your, oh. the start of your application. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're not, we're not looking to, to cause a problem. We're not looking to, you know, in, incur fines. We're, you know, it's just, yeah. for me, it's kind of the principle. Of this right. is all just really unfortunate. Uh, I'm, uh, do you want to make a motion? Or a... Well, no, we're just going to make one observation. Um, I know you want to get along with your neighbors. Absolutely. And I think that you have to show good faith in this effort here to not just to us, but to your neighbors. <laughs> And it's important because um, we lose credibility if you don't do Absolutely. that, too. Understood. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we need to make a motion on this. And I, I think that, okay, I'm going to do this. And if, so don't worry about what I'm about to do here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. I'll make a motion. That we, the board, as a matter of fact, in the conclusion of the law, find the defendant guilty of violation of Code 2.5, 2.5.4B. 
uh, in this case. So I need a second. We have a second. Uh, got a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, carried. All right, now we're going to get to the phase of getting you connected. We had needed to do that to okay. get this to move forward. Is it okay? You got that? Understood. Okay. Yeah, I, I just said transparency. I, I don't know if I were a neighbor of yours, if I would like a 10 foot fence next door to me, so I wouldn't necessarily be in favor of a, of a fence option, just to be transparent. Yeah. Which to me is one reason why a public hearing would you know would help solve that it, it wouldn't necessarily just be a council decision it would there be the opportunity of the neighbors to say no we don't really want that or be an opportunity for them to work with their neighbors prior to say hey we want to do this can we get your support if it looks like this and you know things like that so i would agree with you i think that's their opportunity for the neighbors to come then at that public hearing it won't be, it it's, can't be a staff decision. It's a it's a 100% variant, so it can't be a staff decision. So um, it, it's, gotta, it's gotta have a, a public hearing for it. And it's a variance for this particular piece of property, not for the total community. We singular property, singular owner. So if they would move, it, it goes away. And my advice would be to have a contingency plan ready to go if of this course. does not go the direction you want to, and it may involve having to move it somewhere and I, I understand that and and uh, of course so but uh, that would be my advice is you're doing this have a have a plan b that you can put into place immediately so can all I, right can I, so so if, could i ask is uh, basically the three options option a move it option b cover it up very very well with artificial trees or option three if you can get the city council and others to go along build a fence so that it's not visible from the street. Is that a fair under representation of the three potential options? What was A? <laughs> move, move the RV. Move it, yes. What, I yeah. thought B was I'm, I'm with you on that. Okay. I was like, I was left. I thought that we were, B isn't an option with the artificial trees because it wasn't, I guess, enough. So, so I guess that is a question to the city. It, it doesn't, but if, if they were to add more artificial trees so that it was sufficiently covered from the road, would that be a viable option for I mean, the we have approved, We have approved that in the past, but it was, you know, you're the neighbor across the street. It was, yeah. a, it was a very heavy screen, Yeah, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So but I'm just saying as, as we're solutioning here, yes. because I think everyone wants the win-win. Yeah, I don't want an eyesore. So that's, you know, that we're, we're weighing on that too, trying yeah. to come up with something that, that, you know, would work. But again, I don't want to spend money on something without having, you know, approval. I can't, you know, I, I can't have like, well, let's wait and see what it looks like after you put it up. I, I, I'm not in the financial position to do that. So it's like to know, you know, ahead of time, can we do this, get the approval to do this, and will it be acceptable where we won't be in violation? We want to make sure that you're not something keeps going on however way this turns out we want it to turn out and not to have uh something down the road come back on you so absolutely uh, point, do, yeah. do, does anybody want to make a motion for this or do you want because we need to make a motion to move this thing forward right well you have the motion for the guilty and you've got right. that so now you can you need to move <laughs> to the next phase and so this one's going to sort of be a need like a team effort on this um from everybody. Uh, having found the defendant guilty of violating uh, code, where is it? Right here. Uh, code 2.5.4B, I make a motion that the board take the following action in this case. Uh, we issue a cease and desist order to the defendant in this matter, and uh, that the defendant uh, work with work with uh, code enforcement on uh, attaining a variance for your property, and that uh, you have a uh, plan of action to have this resolved by you said 100 days. So that I don't have a calendar, so uh, I don't know what day that would be. 
June, June 1. June 1st, you think that's good? By uh, June 1st? Um, and we should know something by then? And if the property is not brought into compliance after that time, uh, will be a fine of $25 a day. Okay. So essentially at this point, we just need to stay in touch with... That is your best option because you'll find this the, the, the staff is Mr. more Mr. than... Mr. Smith? Cooperative, yes. We don't have a second. Oh, I made a motion. We need a second. Uh, I'll make the second. Uh, okay, we got a second. Now you can have discussion. Any discussion? Okay, thank you. Uh, Any yes, work, work with them, and then we need to do it uh, all in favor. Yeah, uh, where we can have a discussion. Or, yes. I, I, I just wonder if we should add some, some dates by 3-1. There needs to be a written plan submitted to the city, and, um, and then it sounds like uh, we would give 100 days to either to, to remedy it one way or the other to the to the city's or to the code satisfaction, right. um, and then I I would go higher than twenty five dollars a day if it's not fixed one way or the other by by six one. It, it, I think it needs to be at least fifty a day. Okay, so you, your your amendment to my uh, motion is for how much? Fifty a day. Okay, fifty a day. And uh, the date, the three one date. And, and, and with an amendment to, to have a written plan submitted to the city by 3-1. Okay. Right. To, well, I'm, I'm a little confused. That. He said March, he had presented a timeline on March 1st to get in touch with his department and start working something out. Well, Is that the same thing as about getting something on paper? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're going to need to have, you're going to need to have a, your thought out plan. Okay. To, to bring to us so initially. So, March 1st. Okay. Yeah. So you'll have some time in the middle to to execute um refine the, your thoughts based on staff comments yada yada okay. yada but you've got to bring your solution to us okay if this goes through when's march 1st? by march 1st and, and I'm, oh. I'm sorry what one other one march. other point i didn't realize that the um april is a short month so i mean <laughs> i think a week's reasonable but i'm sorry and i, I think no i'll say five days march 1st is five days from today yeah thank you so tuesday <laughs> okay Okay, it's Thursday. Okay, that works. Okay, so we're good. I accept that, your amendment. So I need a second on that. Need a second on the friendly amendment, and then you need to vote on the friendly amendment, and then the motion. Okay, I need a second on that, on the second, on the friendly amendment. Anybody? I need a second. Need a second or the friendly amendment dies. But you had a second. If you don't, you got one. No, we get a second on my first one. We okay. need one. Mr. Other. Freeman's got the second. Okay. okay. Uh, now you need to vote on the friendly amendment. Thank you. Yep. And then All in favor of motion. the friendly amendment, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Now. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm just opposing. Okay. To yeah, opposing the, the friendly amendment. Yeah. Okay. Still carries though. Yeah. Because. But Robin, I'd be open to hearing an, an alternative idea though. I'm just like, I think $25 is fine per day if they haven't come to a conclusion. So I'm fine with that fine. Okay. <laughs> no pun intended, but um, I'm okay. I, that's the part that I don't agree with. Oh, agree. I don't feel strongly enough about okay. it to, to, to go to 50 if you feel 25 is fair. I believe it's fair, yes. So you want to go back to 25? Correct. But he can still have the plan. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. So I need so a. I think. I need a, Now what you're going to need to do <laughs> is get another it's friendly it. amendment that we got to either sorry. do that and to re, Mr. Bauer could remove his friendly amendment maybe. Or restate it. Maybe. Or restate it. Well, and then, it just, the then it just goes back to my motion. The gentleman. I did. He still added the three one date. Can I address the board? I, I mean, I'm, I've sworn under oath. It is, we don't need to waste time talking about fees. It'll be resolved before June 1st. I know you guys okay. have to. Whether okay. I have to put it in, in a place <laughs> off site, we're, we're not going to go there. 
So we respect our neighborhood. We respect your time. You okay. Guys. Okay. So I don't want y'all to waste time debilitating the fees because there won't be any because we'll be compliant on that date you've given us. So we appreciate the extra time you give us. We don't have okay. extra money to <laughs> All right. in fines. Okay. So uh, do you want to go with my original motion? Or, and I, 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 pre, I know where you're coming from on that. Unless you amend it to talk about a plan if everybody's still on board with that. Yeah, how about I just withdraw mine and we'll set up? <laughs> okay. All right. And then, so we, uh, he's withdrawn his, so we can d do that. So now we go back to mine. And, uh, and I would like to add the time frame that you were talking about earlier. So now we've, we're now we're to this. So I've made the motion. We understand where we are, and I need a second. second. We've got a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, now, <laughs> um, I'm uh, sorry that you've had to go through this and get to this point and had so many conflicting pieces of information, but uh, I think uh, you're gonna, we're gonna get this resolved and uh, please work with code enforcement. You're going to find them willing to do anything they can to help you out to, Perfect. to make sure that things turn out right. All right. Thank you. And thank, thank you me. also be, for being here today. Well, thank you very, thank very you. much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. All right. Take care. Thank you so much. Uh, is there any other business? I'll need a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. We got a motion. Do I need a second? Second. Okay. okay. <laughs> any discussion? I can share or not. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Thank you all very, very much. And it's good to see everybody. Yeah. Good to see you, sir. How are you doing?